Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct, and sorry about the delay. We had a little bit of technical difficulty. I think uh, Facebook has been changing some things and made it difficult to get us started this morning. So I think we're off to a running start now though. So today I wanted to talk about, you know, last week I was talking about these lovely stockings that we were making. And so this is the one that I just made in the last couple days. And it's using Encore, which is by Plymouth Yarn Company. And it is an acrylic wool blend. And Meg, who does a lot of our marketing for us, she was using it for her stocking. And what I liked about the Encore, and this is what the Encore looks like, is when it was knit up in her stocking that she made, it was soft and light, not a heavy stocking, a really light, soft and squishy. And so this designer has made her stocking so that it is the, she knits kind of, her, her gauge is kind of loose. And so it makes, creates this really lovely stocking. And if you look really closely at it, it's kind of wide at the top of the, um, the foot. So you can really shove things in this stocking and it has a short row heel. And if, if you didn't see last week's, I wanted to show you what these look like. I put these in these little sleeves. I did not laminate them like Meg did hers because I like to write notes on mine. So that's what these look like. And they, she has a uh, toe up and uh, top down and toe up. And these are the toe up ones. But if you've ever done charts, all you have to do to change a stocking from toe up to top down is when you go to knit the actual patterns. Say I'm going to knit this one for instance, and it has you knit from one to six. So all I do is turn it this way, and now you knit it in the other direction. So you can take these wonderful stockings that are done toe up and make them top down just by flipping the chart over and starting at number six instead of number one and you get the exact same thing <laughs> so i don't know if any of you out there have tried it have any of you tried it <laughs> do you flip your charts upside down and do them one way and then the other depending on what heel you're in the mood for if you would like a short row heel then you can do it uh top well you can do it either way you can do it toe up or top down it kind of depends on just what kind of mood you're in also, you'll notice on my stocking, I have my hand tag isn't actually an eye cord, it's a knit one, slip one. And this is the same pattern right here. What it gives you is a nice sturdy edge that's not going to be saggy or baggy. And so that's what I did with mine. So, so what was totally it different fantastic. from? What was the other one? Um, the pattern calls for this. This was my big swatch that I made. So this is an eye cord. Uh, cast it, you make a loop and then you finish your eye cord cast on and but it's kind of small and I thought it was nice but I kind of I I don't know I always like to change something so this is what I changed <laughs> I changed oh also on this pattern it has you do the holly like this and see I turned the pattern upside down so they were facing each other instead of having this holly look exactly like this holly I flipped it the other way just for a little interest <laughs> <laughs> so anyway oh so let's go back to this right here I wanted to talk about this nice little swatch pattern that I have here so what I did is I um, took what the uh, designer needle size recommended and I start with knitting with a smaller size needle first then I switch over to a larger size needle and then I switch over to yet another larger size needle until the the stocking is supposed to be 12 inches wide so I kept going up until I get to my, it should be, when it's lined flat, it should be six inches across. And that's what I was looking for so I can get her exact gauge. So I can have my stockings look like her stockings. Uh, that's when checking gauge works because when you're creating this lovely stocking, the last thing you want is to have the hole so tiny to get into it. You can't stuff anything in there. Maybe if it's someone you don't really like, but then you probably wouldn't be making a stocking for them anyway. 
<laughs> you wouldn't spend as much time making a stocking for someone that you didn't really like. So you kind of want the dimensions to be correct. But I thought this was a really fun pattern. Another thing that I noticed that um, some uh, people, even in the pattern, it tells you, do you see these little white uh, dots here? Well, in her pattern, Faye Kennington is talking about if you can't see the white dots, maybe you've made your floats too tight. And I'm sitting here thinking, hmm, floats too tight or yarn dominance? Did you, which yarn did you carry in your hand to make the white dots stick out? So when I am carrying, um, doing this section, I had my right, my black yarn in my right hand and my white yarn in my left hand, which made the white dots stick out. Now on this little sample right here where I have my little penguins, you see how you can't see the eyes? You can barely see the eyes. Well, it's because I was trying to make the black stand out instead of the white stand out. So the black stands out, but then the white eyes disappear. And I'm using, for these ones, I'm using essentially the same needle size and the same tension because I'm, I'm knitting it. And um, the only thing I did different to make it the eyes show up was carry my white yarn in my left hand and my black yarn in my right hand where on this sample I carried my black yarn in my left hand and my white yarn in my right hand. I don't know if that makes sense. So the white comes from up from underneath and the black yarn is pushed to the back. So the black will recede into the background and the white comes popping forward at you. And that's yarn dominance. So when you're knitting these patterns, for instance, you may have to change the dominance of your yarns as you're going along. So in this pattern, I wanted the, the teal color to stand out. So I put the teal color in my left hand. Then when I got to the orange little dots, I wanted the orange color to stand out. So I put that in my left hand. And then in here, I wanted my... Um, penguin face to show up. So I put my white in my left hand so those eyes and nose would show up. Um, you could say that you wanted your penguin to, um, the black to come pop out at you. But if you, if you change yarn dominance, you will see a difference. So if I knit the top part so that the white eyes um, show up, having my white yarn in my left hand, and then I try to switch it, it's really going to be visible. If I take that white yarn and suddenly start knitting a good section with my right hand, it's going to show up and you're going to know that I did that. And you may look at it and go, something looks odd. And you won't know what it is, but that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. You changed what was dominant in the picture. So um, anyway, it's important to think about that when you're doing these patterns. I'll show you, let me see if I can find this page where I started marking um, in one of these patterns. One second here. So I make marks. So here, if you look at these snowflakes, you hold the dark color in your left hand, which will make the snowflakes show up. And then here's your penguins. Do you hold the light color in your left hand so the white uh, of the eyes shows up, for instance, and then hold the light color in your left hand because you want to be able to see the wheels and the inside of the window and all that. So you have to have the white be dominant in that picture because otherwise you won't hardly even see that there, the wheels will just disappear much like this disappeared. And it won't, you won't see the whole picture of what you're trying to see. So on, for instance, this one right down here, the white again would be dominant. So you would hold it in your left hand because you want to see this choo-choo train. It has windows. Let me turn it the other way so you can see. It's a choo-choo train and it has windows. So you want the windows to be visible. And this is the cutest part is the little tires. But if you don't have the white showing, you won't see that it's even a tire. You'll be looking at it and going, hmm. Can't really tell what that is and then you lose the effect of the cute little thing that you're trying to do 
also when I'm doing these patterns, like my granddaughter, um, she loves choo-choo trains and I want to put her name on her stocking. So I know that there is 30 stitches across. So I was messing around with centering and this center one is what I'm gonna go ahead and use. And I'm going to, it's gonna use the same amount of stitches as one of these little guys. So her name will be right across here. That, uh, not on this stocking, but on the choo-choo train, because she likes Brio trains, and this is the one that I'm making for her. Now, this one's, this sample here is interesting, because here I was, um, and the, um, the it measures six inches across, but then when I got down here, see how the gauge started changing, and it got really big? So I'm actually gonna take my work out. I'm working on the choo-choo train, and go back and drop down one needle size for the choo-choo train pattern because my floats and everything look good on the inside, but it's too wide. This is almost an inch wider right in here. So rather than try and block this aggressively and try and pull it out, I want to knit this a little bit smaller so it's about the same gauge. So don't be afraid when you're working on your projects. I know um, not everyone will have this problem. Maybe yours will turn out that way. But for me, my gauge on that one is too loose. So I'm going to drop down a needle size for that actual pattern. And then I will go back to my normal needle size that I'm going to be knitting with. So let's go ahead and talk about our prizes. So for the winner for this last week, it was this taupe color of vintage chunky. And this is a, an, it's a 52% acrylic. 40% wool and 8% nylon. And it's by the Baraco Yarn Company. It's called Vintage Chunky. If you haven't tried this yarn before, it's a great yarn to try. We're getting more this week. Yes, we are so low on it. We've been selling yarn like a Dickens. Do you know that there, I I hope this isn't true, but I've seen people buy tons of yarn all of a sudden. I'm sitting here thinking, they aren't going to knit a sweater before Christmas, are they? Their poor little fingers are going to fall off. I don't know if they are or not, but it makes me worried for the knitters out there. You guys be careful. I know you're overachievers and like to get stuff done, but I see all these blanket quantities of yarn going out the door, and I'm like, oh, please don't. Anyway, so for this week, I was thinking we could offer this lovely encore, and we have the kind of teal on the right and like a sapphire blue. Oops, excuse me. Sapphire blue on your right and teal on your left. So I'm looking at it and say opposite for me. But this is great yarn and it's perfect for doing stockings and stuff. I don't know, I had never realized that the yarn could be so soft and airy and light. It's perfect for stockings. So if you have not um, used Encore for doing stockings and you wanna do stockings, this is a great yarn. Plus the price point on it is really good. So if you have to get several colors, it doesn't break the bank which I always like, huh, Jim? Yep. We like a, a good quality and economical yarn, and this is one of them. And it's particularly nice for the stockings because, like I said, it's not a heavy stocking that's created. It's a very light and lovely stocking. So, and again, let me show you my little, isn't that cute? Uh, my son is a fan of penguins, and because it's the um, mascot for Lennox, and he's a computer guy, and so I thought he would like that. It's pretty cool. And then the one thing on here that I wanted to show you, when I was weaving in my ends, you can see some little where the yarn kind of just peeks through. So what I started doing, because you're gonna be lining this stocking, you can actually tie it knots. You could use knots. I mean, usually we don't like knots, but for this instance, because your um, stocking is gonna be lined, you could do that and then prevent those little uh, specks of yarn showing through. Darn, darn. Anyways, I always learn new stuff every single day. So here I am with the stocking that I did from last week. And this was a Baraco pattern, and I don't have the name of it in front of me now. But it is a big stocking. I, I told my husband. It's Blitzen, right? Oh, Blitzen and yeah. Donner yeah, or something Blitzen, like that? Yeah, it was the Blitzen one. Yeah, anyway, and I put the little beads in mine. And then uh, down here, I changed this, and I tried to use, I actually used less rows than the pattern called for, so my foot isn't quite as long as, as the pattern would have been. But um, 
I put this little doggy in here, and then I put little blue eyes for it. <laughs> Do you see my little blue eyes? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, and this is a short row heel. Oh, and I did a knit one, slip one heel. Do you see how I made it kind of um, have a texture on the heel? I thought that was nice. And it turned out great. I had very minimal mending. I almost had to just, you know, weave in the ends from the color changes, and I was good to go. It, it turned out really clean. And that's so I'm a free happy with too. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and you'll see under here what I did for my, um, I'm using fleece. And this is the fleece that I used. Um, and I bought one yard of it. And you can see there's a, quite a bit left. I think it'll line more than one um, stocking for sure. Um, the thing is, is that this um, fabric has writing on it. So... If you want the inside of the writing to be right side up, um, you ha there's only that way that you can cut it. But it's it makes for a very soft inner lining. And some people, like um, uh, Faye Pennington, when she shows you how to do line the stocking, she actually used old t-shirts. And I thought about that. I almost wondered if um, when I was lining my stocking, if I needed a stretchy fabric because my stocking is stretchy usually like with like but then I thought mm, I don't really want my stocking to um, um, stretch out of shape so it looks funny you know and so anyway I want to pull this liner so first thing I did when I did I just took a regular pen put my stocking over top and just traced around the stocking do you see with the a pen and then you'll see I gave myself a good inch and a half extra because for this sleeve, I wanted to fold it over and have it um, have plenty of to fold over. And then all I did, let me take this out and show you. It was really easy to, I, I haven't um, sewn it in yet because I wanted to show you. So here is my stocking lining and you can see that it's it's a little bit bent, which means that I could have made it even a little bit smaller um, to, um, the thing is, is that here's, here's the, here's the issue. Okay. Here, when I'm tracing it on the outside, that's not actually the inside dimension. Um, there's actually, it's thick yarn in here. So the inside dim dimension is slightly so smaller. So you don't need to leave very much of a seam allowance because it's supposed to be smaller anyway to fit inside this sock. And you can see because this is folded like this that it is a little bit bigger than it actually needs to be. So I could actually do another seam and make it a little tiny bit smaller. And it wouldn't hurt it at all. Um, but it's okay if it's still folded. And then when you do that seam around there, I like to use uh, scissors and cut along the edges just to help with... Um, going around the corners and making it so it's more smooth on the inside. It's all about the feel of it. Because when you're stuffing all your goodies in there, that flannel feels really good. <laughs> and, and it's really cute. I want to go to the store and buy a bunch of flannel and to match every single character. Like I would like to get, for this one, I want to get flannel that has penguins on it. Oh, and there's another thing I wanted to point out to you. On your flannel, the backing is usually white so that you don't have to worry about if you get a loud color or what have you. The back of it is fairly white, so it's not going to show through your knitting. Or it shouldn't. At least mine does, doesn't. So, But it's something to consider for sure. So here I am. I put my liner back in here. And then I would just go through like I did and make sure with your hand that your lining is in a good position that you want it to be in before you just use regular thread and a sewing needle to pin it down. And you don't need to sew it everywhere. I would do, you know, sew a little bit in here, here, and then of course do a, um, either a whip stitch or something like that around the edge here. And if you, you see, I will, I'm just going to slightly put that in. And this one still needs a hand, a hang tag. So I think I'm going to knit something. And before I actually 
uh, put it into position, I'm going to put a, a little, one of these little hanging tags on it. So I have that. And then to make sure to put this in a little bit, at least a quarter inch. I might even iron it a little bit further in just so I don't have it showing when it's up on the mantle. But you see how it's, it fits in there nice. And I'm just going to do it like a quarter of an inch on the inside or so. So it'll add stability to the stocking. And then I'll just se seam it right in there. But yeah, and then then what this does, having the flannel lining, look, no stretching. <laughs> you can put some heavy goodies in there. You could put little toy cars or whatever for the kids. Well, this one, you could probably shove your house into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so long. I mean, look how long it is. It's like, honey, I want this for my stocking. And are you going to make sure to fill it all the way full for me? <laughs> I'm like, you better start shopping now, honey, because you're going to need a lot of goodies to shove in this stocking. <laughs> That's a big stocking. <laughs> it's a big stocking. Yes. So anyway, all right. So these were the um, patterns that I used. And of course, uh, Meg probably already has links there for you because she's awesome. Where is this other one? Oh, I gotta find the beginning pictures so I can show you the front of them. And again, this is by Faye Kennington and it makes all like 30 different stockings or so and you they're all the same size. So it's almost like a quick knit because when you knit, after you knit this little pattern in here, and then you do this little part, this right here, you memorize it really quickly. And then if you're going to do an afterthought heel, you would just drop your lifeline on either side, right? Remember how we talked about that? And put scrap yarn in the center for a perfect pickup. Or you could do the short row heel like I did mine if you're doing top down. And it worked great. Either one would work, toe up or top down. It's beautiful. But... Yeah, I really like these patterns, and I and this one. And you can just mix and match. I mean, look at all the combinations. I, it's a little bit, um, her, the, for these sets, is a little tiny bit expensive. It's like $15. But for me, if I had to figure it out, oh, it's like two cents per hour or something. Yeah, to, trying to figure all these out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's well worth it to do the patterns. So, and then... For this next week, I was thinking I was going to look at this um, silent snow hat. Uh, what does this look like to you? Does that look like a double knitting project? I'm just saying, mm -hmm. double knitting coming up. The hat doesn't call for double knitting. Of course not. I got to change it. But this looks like an awesome double knitting project because it has really long floats. And with double knitting, guess what? No floats. We don't have to worry about it. It's so there's no pinching or pleating. So I wanted to show you on here. Let's see if we can take a look on here. What are you showing in here? Well, I just wanted to, if we look on the back, we see that our floats are, you know, kind of, you want your floats relaxed. You don't want them tight. And then I was going to show them. So um, when I'm doing this, I had decided, sorry, my needles are getting caught up in my yarn here. I had decided that the white color was going to be my dominant color, right? So I would hold that white yarn in my hand. Also, when I'm going around these corners, what I like to do is if um, I have, I'm going to, this brown yarn stops here, I could interlock it on the edges to keep that edge looking really good and keep my uh, floats from getting funky on those edges. So I, when I interlock, I would go old yarn, new yarn, old yarn off, and voila, complete the stitch. So now I've interlocked that yarn. And if it should show right there, you saw me with my, my right hand, just give it a little click up and it'll move out of your way. And then I could just do, um, you know, all the way. Maybe I've done four stitches and I want to interlock it. So then I go, and also always scoot those stitches so it's long, so your floats are loose. See, old, new, old. That's the little trick that I use. And on the next one, 
I'm going to be interlocking the brown. Uh, excuse me, just knitting a brown. And then let's look and see. See how the white yarn is going to come from underneath and you're going to knit it. And then the brown yarn goes over. And th that's this white yarn is the dominant yarn. That's what's going to show up the most. So if I just go along here, and with if there's just like three stitches, just make sure your work is really loose. Say you're getting to one of these V's and you want and you're not sure if the V will be loose. Here's what I like to do. If I if this is one of those V's, I like to take that and just give it a second and just let it loosen up a little bit and then knit on. And that brown one will be loose and nice. So say I'm going to do, okay, let's just interlock one. Since that was five stitches, I'm going to put my right hand needle in as if to knit and I'll be interlocking the brown. So brown is my old color, which goes around counterclockwise like we always wrap. And then our new color wraps counterclockwise and then the old color comes off. And do you see how it gets caught on the back there? And that's all it takes. Then you finish the stitch and that brown yarn is now caught right there. Is that cool? So that's all you do. See how it's caught on there? It's caught in there and it makes, here's what it is. See how we have the stitches in here that are caught? It kind of looks like that. See how that strand of white? That white is catching that brown. This white is catching brown. And that's all you do, do to interlock your floats. And then, and, and always making sure that your floats aren't too tight. They should be kind of, you want them to be loose. Sometimes I see them so loose, and I don't know if that's, if I like that too much, but I definitely want them loose so they're not puckered. So those are all things, and on this pattern, I started with a needle size smaller using that knit one, slip one with the yarn in front. And then on round two, you um, you slip one, purl one with yarn in back to create that. It, what it is, is it's almost like double knitting. It's it, it's like stockinette, but it doesn't really look like stockinette. It's not really ribbing. What it is, is because you're slip, slipping some stitches, it makes for a nice, sturdy, dense Fab fabric that is really good for the edge of stockings and it, it's good for a lot of stuff. I like it and if you look at the um, That fabric and when it's done in a loop it it actually you could if you wanted to you could stick a piece of fabric in the center of it It's a hollow loop, but it's just um, Well See them right next to each other So one's this backward. one's four stitches. This one is three stitches. Hmm. But do you see how much more bouncy? Uh, this one's uh, just more substantial, and it's one stitch difference. So um, I don't know. I really like that knit one slip one. I've been using it a lot for a lot of different things lately, and I really like it. Also, when you're doing the stockings, I just, uh, when I'm going to sew it into place, I'm, I just grab this out of my... Um, um, whatever you call the thread container holder thing that is like an accordion one. And I, I just chose a fabric, uh, yarn, um, thread that is close to the color. That's as close as I had. <laughs> I'm not going to go buy more. <laughs> so when I go to put this in uh, place, I am going to use this thread. And I'll just, when I do it and I'm uh, working with the knit stitches, I'll just make sure to grab the pearl bumps in between and this will not show it'll be easy to get in and out so all right who should we talk about this yeah. okay so let's see if we can see who the winner was for this last week <laughs> oh look at you wrote it down thank you sweetheart um it's melanie black you won. Yay. This is Vintage Chunky. Melanie, all you have to do is contact customer service and we can get it out in the mail to you. You can try out Vintage Chunky and see how you like it. And she's a local customer, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, 
awesome. I hope you are enjoying this snow. It's beautiful outside. Okay, some people don't like snow. What I love about the snow is it's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. And we're just getting a little tiny bit. It's not like we're getting a ton of snow. It's like maybe an inch or an inch and a half, not much snow at all. So you can drive in it really easily. And it's beautiful. I love it. But you do have to scrape it off your windshield or carry something with you. So you, um, I have a cover that I put on my windshield so that I don't have to scrape it. So again, you guys vote on which Encore we should send for next week. Should we send the Sapphire on the right hand side or the Teal on the left hand side? And we'll get this out. And I thought maybe two skeins, you could do a nice little project with it. This is great yarn. You could do, if you wanted solid color stocking, you could do that. I don't know. You try it. You guys will love it. Anyway, so I will see you next Tuesday where I'm going to be talking about the silent snow hat. And I'm going to have fun with this project. And you can see these charts. Look at that. Ooh. Isn't that awesome? Those, those, <laughs> those are the kind you don't want me to bug you when you're knitting. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. My, my dear darling husband loves to talk. And there are times like, no, stop. Do not talk. If you talk, I will mess it up. And it's going to be 5 million stitches I have to go back. Anyway, I'm looking forward to doing the hat. So I hope you guys have a great week. And I hope that you're all ready for Christmas. And take care of yourself. And stay safe. And I'll see you next Tuesday.